Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. Your word is the truth, and we receive it this night, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We will take hold of it. We'll be doers of it. We'll see the fruit of it come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated if you would. Tonight we're going to share with you on the subject of being not ashamed at the coming of the Lord. We see in 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, he says, Now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. The coming is the parousia, which is the second coming of Jesus Christ. He's talking to Christians here. And he says that we might not be ashamed. That means it's possible for us to be ashamed before him at his coming. Of course, that's not what God wants. This doesn't mean it's going to happen. Of course, it doesn't have to happen. Or it's subjunctive mood, meaning it's conditional. The only way we'd be, be ashamed is if we didn't, didn't do the things that he said. And what's he saying here? He says to abide in him. You and I are commanded. This word abide here is in the imperative mood, a command, present tense, continuous repeated action. God is commanding every one of us to abide, to remain, to dwell in Him. And we do that through His Word, as we continue in His Word. Then when He appears, that we might have confidence, subjunctive mood, we may have, this word have here is subjunctive as well. And also that then, as we see, we may continually have, be having that confidence, and we would not be ashamed before Him. We don't want to be ashamed. Instead, we want to hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, and be able to enter into all the things, and be rewarded, be blessed of the Lord. So, we're going to look at things that are necessary for us, so we will not be ashamed at the coming of the Lord. We see in Psalms 25, over in Psalms 25, Psalms 25, we pick up over in verse 2. And he says, O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over thee. Or what would cause them to be ashamed if his tri enemies did triumph over him? Otherwise, God expects us to conquer our enemies and not let them triumph over us whatsoever. He's made you more than a conqueror. He's given you authority. He's given you dominion, and He wants you to conquer everything. He, the one who conquers and carries off the victory, inherits all things. Therefore, we're not going to be ashamed because we're going to trust in Him. We're going to do it as the Word says. We are going to conquer all of our enemies. You and I are on a mission to conquer all enemies in our life and see God bring victory. We see in verse 3, Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. When it talks about waiting on Him, this means having expectancy, hoping expectantly. The Lord wants you to have a confident expectancy, hope, that's what Bible hope is, that you are going to expect Him to perform His word and His promises as you are doing it. If you do that, you won't be ashamed. See, God wants us to see the promises come to pass in our life. So we're going to hope expectantly. Certainly those people that walk in sin and don't deal with it, they will be ashamed before him at his coming because they haven't overcome and conquered the enemies in their life. Down in verse 20. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Trusting in the Lord is mandatory. It's a command before God. God wants you and I to trust in him with all of our heart. When we trust in him, we believe his word. We do what he says. We show it forth by our actions then we will not be ashamed. Instead, He'll deliver us. He'll deliver us from any attacks, and the attacks try to come against our soulish realm. He'll guard us, He'll deliver us, and He'll set us free from bondages that would come against us in our life. In Psalms 31, He says, In Thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in Thy righteousness. So how are we going to be delivered from being ashamed? Being ashamed? It's because we're going to walk in the way of righteousness. He's going to deliver us in His righteousness. Well, as you and I are born again and we're walking in the way of the Word, the Word of righteousness, we're righteous before Him, 
We don't have any sin. We're not going to give place to the enemy. We're going to see God manifest himself. And we will not be ashamed because we walk in righteousness. In verse 17, Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I've called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. O how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. For them what is wrought, wrought, thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Well, we aren't going to be shamed if we call upon the Lord. We aren't going to be shamed as these, wicked, these enemies are smitten underfoot. Those ones that would even speak evil things against you, against the righteous. God wants us to have the fear of the Lord at all times and trust in him. Trusting in the Lord, having the fear of God, doing what he says, God's goodness will come forth and you will not be ashamed. Instead, your enemies will be ashamed instead. In Psalms 35, we pick up in verse 26. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Well, that's what the devil does. The devil tries to magnify himself and he tries to bring hurts, wounds, and damaged emotions against you. If he's accomplished that, then he's been able to be successful. But God wants us to get healed and delivered of that. He will heal our soul. He will deliver us and bring us out of all that. He'll restore you and heal you of all hurts, wounds, and damaged emotions. Therefore, as you get healed, you get restored, you won't be ashamed because you'll have seen God's restoration come forth in your life. We see in Psalms 37, verse 18, he says, The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. If God wants you and I to be upright, if we're upright, this is the word which is actually translated without blemish, or per, many, most of the time, perfect, upright, without spot, uprightly, is you and I will walk uprightly, without blemish, without spot. We're walking in holiness. We're walking in the ways of the Lord. He says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and the days of famine shall they be satisfied. That means if you walk uprightly, God's going to provide for you. And it doesn't matter what comes, any evil time, you won't be ashamed because God will be there to meet your needs. He'll deliver you. He'll set you free. You'll walk in victory. And you will be satisfied regardless of what is going on in the world. Otherwise, God will take care of those who are walking uprightly before the Lord, without spot, without blemish before Him. <clears throat> Over in Psalms 40. Psalms 40, verse 14. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. The enemy, of course, seeks after the soul, tries to destroy it. Areas where he's had some effect in the past, from a ch ch childhood, from situations in your life. Well, as you get delivered, you get these demons cast out, <clears throat> you're going to be set free. A person would be ashamed and confounded if the enemy was successful to accomplish his work and maintain it. But no, we're going to drive all the enemies out. They're going to be driven backward. They're going to be cast out. They're going to be put to shame themselves that are trying to bring evil. And God's going to bring forth the opposite of shame is God's going to bring his honor to you as he delivers you and heals you and sets you free. He will bring us out of all bondages. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 6. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. When we walk in line with his word, we have respect to it, showing that we hearken to it, we're doing it. Then we won't be ashamed because God's a performer of his word. And his word will bring life. His word will bring healing. His word will bring blessing. His word will bring the promises of God to pass in our life. We need to have respect to it. That means we look to him. We, we obey them. We show regard to his commandments by hearkening diligently unto him. God also wants you to be a dynamic witness for him. He says in Psalms 119, verse 46, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings even. Otherwise, you're going to witness wherever you might go and will not be ashamed. God will use you to speak the word into people's lives, who regardless, even people in so-called positions of power or whatever, 
to get the Word of God into them. He wants you to be a vessel for Him to flow through, to witness, to testify of the things of the Lord. In verse 78, let the proud be ashamed. And that means if we got pride in our life, we are going to be ashamed. It means we got to conquer the pride. Hum, humbles, mandatory, humility. For they dealt perverse me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. You meditate on the word, you submit yourself to him, you walk in his ways, you have a humility about you, you won't be ashamed. Instead, the Bible says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He shows favor to the humble. He'll exalt the humble, the ones that have submitted themselves unto him. God will lift you up. It's important that you have a humility established in your life. In verse 80, he says, Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, in his word, that I be not ashamed. God's word gets written in your heart. He wants you to make sure you keep it in the midst of your heart. You don't let the devil take it out. And your heart is to be sound in the statutes. He brings revelation to you. He imparts spiritual understanding and wisdom to you in your heart. So he wants you to be sound in your heart with the word. And this word's in your heart because this is why you, what you're walking after. You're keeping it there. It's going to bring motivations, desires, and show you the way of the Lord. Then you're not going to be ashamed because you're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. We see in verse 116, Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. What's our hope in? It's in the Lord. And what's the source of hope? The Scriptures. He's a God of hope, and the Scriptures produce hope, which is the confident expectancy of what He'll do for us. So, as our eyes are upon the word, He's going to uphold you according to the word. And as you get that word in you, and you speak it and do what He says, it'll, He'll uphold you in everything. Remember, Jesus was upholding all things by the spoken word of his power when he put it in operation. God will do the same thing for you. He'll uphold you in every situation. He'll bring you through victorious in your life. So you will not see the enemy accomplish anything in your life. In Proverbs chapter 12, it makes quite a statement or for women. Verse 4, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. God wants every wife to be a virtuous woman. Be a crown to her husband, it says. You don't want to, don't be one of those that makes a shame because you're not a virtuous woman. Virtuous woman from Proverbs 31. Uh, all looks the ways of her household. The law of kindness is in her, in her mouth. She shows strength. She shows, she does, accomplishes everything and does great things in the household and ministers to it. That's the one that you want to be. You want to be one that's doing your part of the things that God wants you to do in that household. But you make a shame. You'd be as rotten as in his bones, he says. We don't want to have that happen. Isaiah chapter 1, over in verse 28. The destruction of the transgressors, the sinners shall be together, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed. The oaks which you've desired shall be confounded for the gardens that you've chosen. For you shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. He's speaking to them. They're like oak. They're supposed to be strong, but their leaf is faded, so they're not strong. They're ashamed now. And they're supposed to be a garden that produces fruit and great good things. All this for produce instead has got no water. <laughs> It's going to dry up and produce absolutely nothing. God wants you and I to be strong like an oak. We're going to be strong. Nothing is going to shake us. And we're going to be like a garden. We're going to see God's production of fruit in our life. He brings forth the good things. We, you know, we're not going to be ashamed. We're not going to forsake the Lord. We're going to walk in His ways. Actually, if we're not bringing forth the fruit and not being strong... It's because they had forsook the Lord. They didn't walk in His ways. Because if you walk in the ways of the Lord, it will always produce strength. It will always produce fruitfulness in your life. So doing His Word is going to be a key. We're never going to draw back from walking in His ways. We're going to hearken unto His voice and do what He says. Isaiah 23, verse 4. Be thou ashamed, O Zidon, for the sea hath spoken, even the strength of the sea, saying, I travail not, nor bring forth children, neither do I nourish up young men, nor bring up virgins. 
Why were they ashamed? Because they didn't do the things that God wanted them to do. They were supposed to travail. They were supposed to bring forth children. They were supposed to nourish up young men. They were supposed to bring up virgins. That means God wants to use you in ministering to others. You're going to travail in intercession for others to come to the Lord. You want to see people come forth, to be, come for, bring forth children, spiritual children coming forth, receiving Jesus, being born again, getting raised up, being nourished up. We're to make disciples of all nations and help people to grow up in the things of God. See people come up and be strong and victorious. So he wants to use you to minister unto people. He wants you to be a prayer warrior. He wants you to win souls. He wants you to be one who's making disciples and ministering to others. Remember, our life is here to serve the Lord. He wants you to be a servant of Him and carry out the ministry that He would have all of us to, to minister to people. Isaiah 29, verse 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord who redeemeth Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. When he seeth his children the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. What's going to bring us to the place of growing up in all these things so we won't be ashamed? It's because of the fact that we see the work of God's hands. God's work is going forth in your life. He's begun a good work in you. He will perform that work till the day of Jesus Christ. He's coming in the midst of you. He's there by His Spirit, and He's going to come through the Word in your heart, in your mind. And He's going to produce His sanctification work, as well as the fear of God, so you don't walk in the ways of sin. He's going to bring you to understanding, spiritual understanding, and that we would learn doctrine so we walk in the ways of the Lord. That's what he wants. You've got to be taught. You've got to learn the ways of the Lord, follow him, be obedient to walk in his ways. Then we come to Isaiah 30, though, and he says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. They're, not take, they're taking ungodly counsel instead of godly counsel. That cover with a covering, and not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They're just covering over their sins rather than dealing with their sins the way they should have. That walk to go down into Egypt. Egypt's a type of the world. We're not to be going to Egypt. We left Egypt. We are not going in the ways of the world. We're going in to possess the promised land. Have not asked at my mouth. They were making all the decisions on their own, choosing their own way, instead of seeking the counsel of the Lord and the leading and the guiding and direction of Him to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. That meant they were looking to worldly ways instead of looking to the Lord for their strength and for the direction. Therefore, should the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and trust in the shadow of Egypt, that will produce your confusion. It goes on, and he says down in verse 5, They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. That meant they were looking to people that couldn't help them. God does not want you to look to the ungodly. He does not want you to look to the world. He wants you to look to Him and look to people that are following His way, who can have minister things of God unto you. You don't want to be wrapped up in the things of this world. You don't want to let yourself be rebellious or take counsel that's contrary to the Word. You'll make mistakes, wind up walking in wrong paths and seeing no prosperity and no blessing in our life. We certainly do not cover over our sin. We've got to deal with it. Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Time after time, God talks about those that would try to come against you. They'll be ashamed. They'll be confounded. See, God will fight against your enemies. He will smite your enemies and put them underfoot. Any ones that come against you and they want to destroy you in some capacity so you are ashamed. That's when you aren't victorious, see. It says, they shall be as nothing. They that strive with thee shall perish. Every enemy can be smitten. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You're going to condemn every tongue that rises against you. 
Doesn't matter what's trying to come against you, they're going to be ashamed, confounded, not you. You cannot have any fear. You've got to look to the Lord for strength and your help, uphold you, lead you, guide you in the way that you should go. Isaiah 42, verse 17. We cannot have anything as a source outside of the Lord. It says, They turn back, they shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images. Say to the molten images, you are our gods. Now oh, they were looking to these idols. Anytime you look to anything that is not of the Lord, it will become a source other than the Lord, which is what an idol is. An idol becomes a source other than the Lord. And they'll be greatly ashamed. God is to be our source. He's a jealous God. And he wants us to look to him and look to his word because he is the existing God. He's the all-present God. He's the God who will manifest himself. He's a God of might. He's a God of strength and power. He's a God who performs his word. He's a covenant-keeping God. He's a God who will speak to you and lead you and guide you and show you everything that you need, have, to, have to do. And he'll provide everything for you. He's to be your all in all. Don't look to other things. Look unto him. Otherwise, you'll be ashamed. All these things contribute towards people being ashamed. We don't want to stand before the presence of God at the very end and well, did you look to me? Did you rely on me? Did you overcome this? Did you take my counsel? Did you seek after me? Oh no, I was walking on my own ways. Well, we're going to be ashamed before him. Isaiah 44, verse 9. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit their own witnesses. They see not nor know they may be ashamed. What's going to happen if you don't look to him? You're not going to get revelation. You're not going to be able to see things clearly. You're not going to know things clearly. Anytime we're not having our eyes on him, we're going to be deceived. And you'll, you may think you're seeing right, but you're not. You may think you're knowing right, but it'll be the wrong path. And we'll be led down. We've all been led down a wrong path when we weren't following the way of the Lord in the past. That's why we always got to have our eyes on him and seeking after him. Isaiah uh, 49. In Isaiah chapter 49 Verse 23, he says this, Kings shall be nursing fathers, their queens, their nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their faces toward the ground and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. doesn't matter what comes at you, even kings or queens, whatever it might be. Those that wait for him, for him on the Lord, God will exalt you you will not be ashamed. You will see that the Lord will manifest. You're going to know that the Lord is the Lord who will perform his word. God is a God who's not a distant God. He's a God who wants you to know him. He wants to have a personal, intimate fellowship with you. He wants to show up in your life every day that you develop and you know the Lord. And you've got to know that he'll be there. You can't just hope, I wonder if he'll show up. No, you're going to have to trust in him and really be in faith. Isaiah 50, verse 7, The Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint at the, towards the Lord, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. So you've got to know God's going to be your total source. He's going to bring you through. It doesn't matter what the situation is. If you keep your eyes on him, God will will bring you through. Isaiah 54, verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. Did you have a lot of destructive things when you were young that brought shame to you? Whether you caused it or whether you were victimized by somebody, God will deliver you of that. He'll heal you of that. As you get those spirits cast out of you and you take hold of the Word of God and walk in it, God will deliver you, heal you, restore you of all the negative things that have happened in your life. He is a healer of the soul. And you'll come and place you, you will, all that shame will be gone. All the things that the enemy has brought will be gone, be eliminated in your life. You will not be shamed or you will not be confounded because the Lord will deliver you. Over in Psalm 65, Verse 13, here it speaks of those who are the servants of the Lord. 
He says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold my servants. That's the ones that are following him and obeying him and do what he says, being used of him. They're going to eat, but you shall be hungry. My servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. My servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. That means the servants are the ones that are going to get blessed. They're going to be blessed. They're going to be eating. They're going to be drinking. They're going to be rejoicing. While the ones that aren't serving are going to be lacking. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be thirsty. They're going to be ashamed before them. God wants you to be a servant. God takes notice of those who serve him. You cannot be serving yourself and following the way of the Lord. Those who serve themselves, they're walking in the flesh. We don't live unto ourselves anymore. We live unto him at all times in our life. We see in Jeremiah chapter 6, these all are important things because we want to be sure we're not ashamed at the coming of the Lord. Jeremiah 6 verse 15, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? They should have been. No, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. They were doing all these evil things. People get to the place where they sin and they don't, they don't even think of it as hardly any big deal of sinning. Ahab thought it was a light thing to walk in sins. People now do things that even 30 years ago you thought nobody would do those kind of things and yet people are doing all this evil today. Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them and fall. At that time I visit them, they shall be cast down. Judgment is going to come upon those that have not dealt with their sins. We must deal with the sin areas in our life and repent and turn away from them. In Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 9, the wise men are ashamed. They're dismayed and taken. Lo, why? They rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom's in them. Well, they thought they were wise. They were just wise in their own eyes. We can be wise in a lot of worldly things, wise in worldly ways. But what we need is the word of the Lord in us. We've got to be wise before God. That's what counts. They rejected the word of the Lord, so what wisdom's in them? None. Well, there isn't any wisdom anymore. And look what it says happens to them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others. Oh, that's a, adultery and divorce, all kind of destruction. Their fields to them that shall inherit them. You know, they lose, lose some of their possessions. For every one from the least even to the greatest is given to covetousness. All they do is think about possessing things. From the prophet even to the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. There isn't any truth coming forth. They're doing all these things that are wrong because they're walking contrary. They, they, they rejected the word of the Lord. For well, they've healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there's no peace. Well, these gave them a nice little God bless you prayer. <laughs> Didn't do anything for them. They needed continual deliverance and ministry and helping them encourage them and ministering to their needs. One of these little quick things, you know. Were they ashamed when they'd committed abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Here they say, fall down in the time of the visitation to be cast down. Same thing that we saw before. And what is it the case of these guys? These guys rejected. They rejected the word of the Lord. It is absolutely imperative in our life that we receive the word of God. We walk in it. So we'll have the wisdom of God. We'll be walking his ways. Because if not, all kinds of destruction. I mean, this is quite amazing curses because of rejecting the Lord. Divorce, poverty, loss of possessions and so forth. Then this covetous thing gets on you. You know, and maybe you weren't even that way before. And then all these false things come forth. God wants us to make sure we don't reject the Word of God. What you do with the Word is very important. God is going to take notice at the end of your days, it's going to be, what's, is the, where's the word? Is the word in you? And what have you done with my word? That's going to be that every one of us are going to respond to. Jeremiah 17, verse 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they've forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. 
Remember those guys in Matthew chapter 7 that were walking in righteousness at one time and had, you know, they, they had some fruit, they were casting out demons, they were prophesying, they did all these wonderful works and they quit. They forsook the Lord and they were now are walking in lawlessness. He said, depart from me, you're out of here. Otherwise, we can't forsake him, we've got to walk with him. People say, well, I thought that, well, that God will never leave you and forsake you. Well, that's right, he won't leave you and forsake you, but it doesn't say you can't forsake him. He's not going to leave you, but you could leave him. And if you leave him, then you're going to hear, depart. That's why we want to make sure that we're walking in the ways of the Lord. First place in our life. You're going to live your life unto him. Jeremiah 22, 22. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then thou shalt be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. That's why if we don't have truth coming forth and dealing with sin, everything we do is worthless. We've got to walk a holy walk before the Lord. For the wickedness has to be dealt with. All sin has to be eliminated in our life. We hardly hear anybody out there proclaiming these things. They don't want to talk about it because nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> They're in trouble. We must talk about it. Jeremiah 31, verse 19, Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. So here he's, he made a lot of mistakes, but he did the right thing. He turned, he repented, he got instructed in the way of the Lord, so he got, him, got himself right. He was ashamed, though, from bearing the reproach of his youth. Of course, in the New Testament, we can get free of everything. We can get healed, we can get delivered, we can come out of all bondage in every area of our life, and we can walk in the ways of victory. All past ways, all these things, you repent, you turn from them, you start casting out the demons, walk in the way of the Word, you will overcome them. We have to get his instruction and do the things that he says. We see over in Hosea, Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10, we already saw one scripture about counsel, but here it's pretty clear. It says, it shall, also, it shall be also carried into Assyria for a present to King Jerob. Ephraim shall receive the shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. He took his own counsel instead of taking God's counsel. We cannot walk in our counsel. If we walk in our own counsel, we'll be ashamed. You don't want to just figure things and reason in your mind or follow your emotions or your feelings. You've got to get the counsel of the Lord, make sure that things are in line with the Word. Look at what it says in the last days. There's a prophecy here in Joel, in verse chapter 1, verse 11. He says, Be ashamed, O you husband, how, O you vine dressers, the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the fields perished. No fruit. No fruitfulness. Because they weren't walking in the way of the Lord. They weren't doing the things that God said. The vine was dried up. The fig tree was languisheth. The vine, that's what would be, that would speak of the church, because Jesus the vine were the branches. Everything's dried up. And the fig tree, that would speak of those that are the Jews, supposedly, they, they, they didn't come to the Lord, they languished. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, the apple tree, all these trees of the field, which are all the type of us, they're all withered. Joy's withered away from the sons of men because of all the destruction that's come. But the good news is, the people that get in line with his word and start doing what he says, they're going to be fruitful. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. He's given you the former rain, and we talked about this on Sunday night, this scripture. The former rain, this means the teacher rain, and the moderately means righteousness. Put the cursor over the word moderately, it actually means righteousness. If you weren't here, look at the usage of it. 157 times this Hebrew word's used, 128 translated righteousness, 15 justice, 9 right, 3 righteous acts, 1 righteously. It means righteous, righteousness. 1 moderately for some reason. This is why Young brings, brings it out. He's given to you the teacher for righteousness. We've got to be taught the way of righteousness. We can't be taught falsehoods. We can't be taught fables. We can't be taught 
just the commandments of men, doctrines of devils. We've got to be taught the truth, righteousness, the way of righteousness. He says, I'll cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain and the first. He says, on the floor shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. This is the outpouring of this rain that's going to come where God comes with the rain. And what's the purpose of the rain? To ripen the, ripen the crops and to bring forth the fruitfulness. That's exactly what he'll do. He'll bring forth wheat. He'll bring forth the wine and the oil. This is all the harvest that comes. The harvest will come forth. And what's he go on and say? I'll restore to you. God will restore everything that the enemy's brought against you. Doesn't matter what the enemy's done, you can be restored of everything. And then he says, you'll eat in plenty. That's prosperity. You'll be satisfied. You'll praise the name of the Lord your God. He's dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Again, what causes shame? A lack of seeing God produce the things of God in your life. If we're seeing God's fruitfulness, His prosperity, His blessing, His promises, His healing, His deliverance, His restoration, we won't be ashamed. That's, that's God's work. We're only ashamed if we don't see God accomplishing His great work. And He says, And you'll know that I'm in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Hey, if we're never ashamed, that means no enemies are going to triumph over us anymore. We're going to walk. Victory. We're going to be the head, not the tail. We're going to be above, not beneath. The blessings are going to be coming on us and overtaking us. That's because God's in the midst. And you know that He's the Lord and none else. Otherwise, you don't have your eyes on anybody else but the Lord. He is going to be your total source in life. That's what He wants. He wants us to rise up and to walk in His way so He can bring forth the fruitfulness in our life. We see in Zephaniah chapter 3, Zephaniah chapter 3, over in verse 11. In that day thou shalt not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of thy, my holy mountain. Otherwise, pride's going to be eliminated. We're going to be humble. We're going to walk in the ways of the Lord now. See, the ones that are full of pride, they always get brought down low. You've got to deal with pride. Pride's what caused the devil to fall. We'll be ashamed. The pride is what is root behind all transgression. I do what I want to do. I sin because I want to do it. Instead of walking in the ways of the Lord. No more are going to be haughty because of the holy mountain, the presence of God, the holiness that God is going to bring into our life. Over in the New Testament in Mark, quite a statement made in Mark chapter 8, verse 38. He says this, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You can't be a closet Christian. You can't be a Christian that says you're one but doesn't act like it or show it forth anywhere. You can't be ashamed of him. And you can't be ashamed of his word. You want to receive his word and do what his word says and walk in it. In the midst of this adulterous and sinful generation, we certainly have one right now, that's for sure. You'll be ashamed. The Son of Man will be ashamed of you. However you treat him is the way he's going to treat you. We've got to make sure that we are not ashamed of Jesus. We're going to stand up. We're going to witness. We're going to testify. You will be persecuted for righteousness' sake. But nonetheless... You need to do what God says. Stand up for Him. Over in Luke, chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. He, also, he said also unto His disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused of him that he had wasted his goods. He was wasting what God gave him. Well, that's not good. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou may, mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. Shame comes on those that aren't good stewards. He wants you to be a good steward of all the things that God's given you. That would include finances. That would include things. That would include gifts and talents and abilities, the things that he's given you, the things that he's equipped you with. 
Whatever He's given you, He wants you to use it for Him, to glorify Him. Don't be one who's a waster. Don't be one who blows, you know, be wise with your finances. He wants us to be a good steward over all the things that He's given to us. Then you will not be ashamed. Over in Romans, chapter 1, verse 14. I'm a debtor both to the Greeks and the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Otherwise, he wants us to be preaching the gospel. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. We need to be like Paul, ready and willing to preach the gospel. Jesus paid the price for you. People came to you in some, some way. He somehow got the gospel to you. We need to be vessels to get the gospel to others. You and I are to go preach the gospel. We're commanded to do so, to preach the gospel and to minister it to other people and stand up for what is right. Pass out tracts. Talk to people about the Lord. Witness to them. Because the body of Christ as a whole has not done this, then people haven't been witnessed to and the word has not been sown in them. In Romans chapter 5, verse 5, Hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Again, we need hope. If we have hope, we won't be ashamed, because hope is the confident expectancy of what God will do. And then you put your faith in operation that will bring your hopes into being. You must always have hope. He's a God of hope and He wants to fill you with hope. And you're bound in hope and with joy and peace, and believing and knowing what He'll bring forth, all the promises in your life. We also see in Romans chapter 6, over in verse 13, He says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And he goes down to verse 16 and he says, Know ye not to whom, that's a person, you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked you were the servants of sin, but you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine that was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness, which is what we are. I speak after the manner of men now because of the infirmity of your flesh, as you yielded your members, all your faculties, servants in the past to uncleanness and to lawlessness. This word iniquity means lawlessness, doing things contrary to God's word, his laws. It produces more lawlessness. Even now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. And then he goes on and he says, When you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit and had you in those things which you're now ashamed? We are ashamed of all the things that we did that were of sin. We're ashamed of all those things that were unrighteous, that were contrary to the word. And what was the end of all those things? It was nothing but a bunch of destruction. What fruit did we have? Bad negative fruit. No, God does not want that going forth any longer. We're now made free from sin. We're servants of God. We have fruit unto holiness, the end of everlasting life. No more shame for bad things. No, instead it's going to be fruitfulness and blessing, holiness, everlasting life, as he says. We also see over in Romans chapter 10, where he talks about, in verse 13, that's Romans chapter 10, that is, Romans 10, down in verse 13, he says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he talks back, back here in verse 9 and 10, he says, If you confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart God's raised from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes continually unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. But the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You believe, you're going to be saved. You believe, it's going to produce your healing, your deliverance. Because you're going to believe and you're going to confess and speak things into being to bring promises to pass in your life. God will do that for you. 
At the same time, we've got to realize, as it says in 1 Corinthians 1, 27, God's chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, those people that think they're wise out there in the world. He's chosen the weak things of the world to confound or to bring to shame or dishonor and disgrace the things that are mighty. So it's going to confound and bring dishonor upon those that think that they're right. Otherwise, just don't think that God's going to use these people that are real wise and mighty. No, he's going to use all of us in order to confound these ones. Bring the truth to them. Bring the word of God to them. And we don't want to be wise or mighty or these things in worldly ways, but we want to be in the things of the Lord so we can minister effectively to others. <coughs> in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, 1 Corinthians 4, 14, he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons to warn you. Whenever you are sharing the gospel with people or to bring even a correction to them, don't do it in such a way that you're going to kind of put them down or shame them or feel, make them feel ashamed in a sense. No, you're, you're bringing the truth to them in a right way to warn them. You know, call them to repentance, of course. But, you know, like he's writing them to them and correcting them. They had a lot of problems in the Corinthian church. But he wasn't doing it to shame him. No, he's bringing it to correction. It's the devil who wants to bring shame on people. So you've got to watch how you, you be sure that when you're correcting someone or correcting children or bringing something, that you're not going to do it in such a way that's going to cause a shame, essentially, by you, the way you did it, see? You're going to warn people. You're going to tell them the truth. You're going to call them to repentance. But you want to pre otherwise preach the gospel in the right way. And that's important. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. For I boast, if I boasted anything to him of you, I'm not ashamed, as we spake all things to you in truth. Even so our boasting, which I made before Titus, is found in truth. Otherwise, I'm not ashamed of what I spoke. I'm just going to speak truth. I'm not going to hold it back. I've got to bring the truth to people. You've got to bring the truth to people. We've got to bring the truth. We cannot hold back from speaking forth the truth. This is what people need to hear. It's inward afflictions more abundant towards you. I remember the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. Otherwise, this guy went forth and he spoke the word. And this is, this is a, he was bringing forth truth. That's what's good, even though it said, he, you know, with how fear and trembling you received him, you know, and must have brought a hard word to them. Nonetheless, we've got to speak truth. We've got to speak truth to people, and we cannot hold back. God is expecting you and me to speak the truth and bring forth the revelation of the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 10, sometimes it's called tough love, you know. You've got to tell it like it is. You can't back off. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 8. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as I would terrify you by letters. Otherwise, he's pretty tough in the things that he wrote. He was writing with some pretty strong things, telling them, you need to get these things in order. Come in line. Sometimes you have to speak sternly or write sternly in the sense, you know, he had strong words, but he wasn't going to hold back because they needed to come to the place of repentance, and that's what God wants. We see over in Philippians, chapter 1, verse 18, What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do, it, therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to your salvation through your prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Again, Paul had to go forth with boldness. He wants boldness upon the body of Christ. We do things in love, we do things with wisdom, but we can't have fear, we can't have timidity, We've got to be going forth in, with boldness and in nothing. 
to be ashamed whatsoever. That's why you keep casting out those spirits of fear, worries, anxiety, timidity, nervousness, whatever it might be that are trying to hinder you. Cast them out, drive them out, so you will have a boldness upon you. Over in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3. Here we see over in verse, verse 14. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, that means to mark that man, have no company with him, which means you're not going to have fellowship with him, that he may be ashamed. Otherwise, are we going to walk with people and have fellowship with people that are going to walk contrary to the word and be disobedient? No. People that might bring heresies, speak things that are contrary to the Word of God, not walk in the ways of the Word of God, or want to continue to walk in sin and not want to deal with the problem areas in their life. The Bible does say, if they're not going to be obedient, you mark that man and you're not to have company. The word company with, again, means to mix together with, essentially, um, just to really have fellowship with someone. that They might be ashamed. They are, you know, again, we're, we want to see people come to repentance, but you don't want to have fellowship with people that are walking wrong, otherwise there'll be, it could be a transfer of spirits by the wrong people that you're fellowshipping with. That's not talking about ministering to them or sharing the gospel with them or being around them even at work where you're just in a workplace. We're talking about fellowship with them where you're going to buddy around with them. That's the type of a thing that it's speaking here. We see over in 2 Timothy, Chapter 1. Some people get confused about that. They think, well, I can't get around anybody. Well, you'd never get around to witness anybody, you know, if there's that. We're not talking about that at all. In first, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of, our, of the Lord, nor of me as prisoner. See, they had a lot of problems. Paul got put in prison. He was a prisoner. They got ashamed of him. Well, that's a mistake. You can't be ashamed of someone just because they got put into prison for righteousness sake. You know, think, well, I don't want to be identified with that guy. Well, no, he was going to, if he's doing right, you're going to, you're going to stand behind him. Be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. We got to be on God's side and not be moved by what happens with people. Here he goes on and says, He saved us, He's called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Every one of us has a purpose. He's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And now he talks about how he's a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. In other words, don't be ashamed for the things that you might suffer for the gospel's sake. Don't let yourself be ashamed. For I know whom I believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. You've got to always remember you're representing Jesus in everything that you do. Regardless of there's persecution, regardless, a lot of people have a fear of persecution, and they won't witness, or if timidity it takes hold of them, and they, they you know, fear a man, and it just hinders them. Really, it's, we're going to be ashamed before the Lord. If we have not witnessed for Him, if we're ashamed of Him, He'll be ashamed of us. Instead, we need to rise up and do what the Word says. Again, if you have a lot of, say, well, boy, I'm trying to, but i got a lot of fears, worries, anxiety, nervous stress. You know, I try to witness and seem like my, you know, my, my stomach's up in my mouth. I can't hardly even speak and so forth. Well, that's enemies, spirits. Just work on casting them out, driving them out. You'll overcome it. You can conquer that in your life. You know, some people have a hard time testifying because they've had a lot of things. Just keep working at it, keep casting it out, and just do what you can do and start developing. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So here it's speaking about being ashamed. Someone that doesn't do the work that God told him to do would be ashamed. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. I shouldn't be ashamed. And when it says study, the word study actually is the word spadazo, which means to be diligent. It's not a good translation. 
be diligent, as Jung brings out, to show or really to present, as Jung brings out very well, to be approved unto God. Two ways. A workman that's not going to be ashamed because you've done the work of God. You've done the works of the Lord. You've carried out all the things he said. And also rightly dividing the word of truth because you have studied the word and you've got the truth. You get the word in you. You know, you, you aren't deceived. You're not following after false teaching and, and doctrines of devils and so forth. You rightly divide the word of truth. And we're going to be bringing a message on this pretty soon because there's so many people that are wrongly dividing the word of truth. It's astounding out there. Rightly dividing the word of truth is important. And also so that we are doing the works of the Lord. Be a worker. Be a laborer for Him. So you're not ashamed. We're going to do the same works He did. You know? And we are going to give account for all the deeds we've done in our body. We are to be a worker for the Lord. Over in Titus, chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, in verse 8. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. As you're witnessing, make sure you do it in a way such that nobody has anything evil to say of you. You know, I mean, if you get into a shouting match, you get angry, you get, you know, <laughs> this guy, he's got a, they're, they're not going to have a good witness, you know. Or if, you're, you know, you you get, get out of control, get into strife. That's not a good thing to do. Uh, we need to be sound speech. And also it comes back to Titus 2.1. You speak the things that become sound doctrine. We've got to have the word in us so we're ready to speak the word. If you don't know it, you're not ready to speak. You say, well, I've got to find some things out. I'll come back to you. Instead of, you know, if you're talking to someone about something. You need sound doctrine as you're going to speak. And as you do that, with sound speech, you're not going to be able to be condemned. You're, the one might be contrary to you, he's going to end up being shamed because you're going to be able to prove the truth of the Word of God. And that's important. Now, we're not proving the truth of the Word of God so that I'm right and you're wrong. We're bringing forth the truth to help people come to the truth and also that we're not going to back off of bringing forth the truth when someone challenges us on things. But again, it's not ever a motivation to, to win the battle or win the debate or win something. No. If you have that attitude, that's a prideful attitude. Well, I put them down. No, you put somebody down, it's the wrong way to approach. You don't try to put somebody down. You know. Instead, you want to give them the Word of God. Doctrine, strong, sound speech, so that you brought forth the things that God wants you to bring forth. You did it in the right way. Nobody has any evil thing to say for you. You presented the gospel in the right way. You weren't condemning. You weren't uh, putting them down in some way. You, you didn't make them feel like they're a zero. You know? No, we're not, we're not condesc or co condescend like I'm up here and you're down here. No, you don't do those. You've got to make sure that you're preaching the gospel and approaching people in the right way at all times. We also see over in Hebrews chapter 2, Sanctification, being holy before the Lord, is important for you and I because it speaks of the Lord here. In Hebrews 2.11, both he that sanctifieth, that's the Lord, and they who are sanctified, that's you and me, who are being sanctified, it's a present tense verb, not already accomplished, but are being sanctified, are all of one, for which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren. He's not ashamed of us if we're doing the things that he tells us to do. Well, he would be ashamed of us if we're not doing the things. We're abiding in sin. Both he that sanctifieth, that's the Lord, and those who are being sanctified are all of one. So he considers us his brethren. We're brethren, brothers and sisters to him. And he's not ashamed to call us brethren, so that means we'll be approved of him. That's why be sure that you are in the process of being sanctified, working out your salvation, overcoming areas in your life, casting out the spirits, dealing with all areas of sin, walking in the ways, becoming holy before the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16, Now they desire a better country that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city, this is the one where they were seeking after, uh, seeking a country, a different place. 
you know, the place that God had for them. All these ones that died in faith, but they never got the promises. They didn't in the Old Testament. Yet, you know, he says, God's not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You want to be seeking after the Lord and doing what he wants you to do, regardless of what happens in your life. Down the road, even in the tri Great Tribulation, there'll be people that'll be martyred. Well, that doesn't mean that you're going to be, you know, you failed the test. It does say that there were some who are, who are going to be martyred. The main thing is you can never deny the Lord. You've got to follow him. Those that didn't, didn't deny the Lord, that kept his name, they followed him, you know. Even said to the one group, you said, you're going to be faithful, you're going to death to ten days, you know. Just be faithful. It's going to happen. Hopefully it will all, won't have that happen. Instead, we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. But one thing's for sure, never back off of following the Lord. Your God will not be ashamed to call, be called their God as he's prepared for you That's the city, the heavenly Jerusalem that you and I are going to end up in down the road. We see over at 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation, your manner of life, conduct, and behavior. Otherwise, God wants us to really make sure we handle ourselves always right so that nobody's got anything evil to say against us. You know, make sure that your life's above reproach in the way you're handling things. You've got a good conscience. They may, may speak evil of you, but they'll be ashamed that are falsely accusing your good behavior. You know, they may falsely accuse you. So what? Don't let it bother you. They could falsely accuse Jesus. And they'll falsely accuse if you are above reproach and walking right, that's what counts. Make sure you're right before the Lord. That's the key. So you have a good conscience, good behavior, good manner of life, so you will not be ashamed. We see another scripture over in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, where he says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Again, there will be suffering for in the persecution for the gospel's sake, that's what's going to happen. All those that live godly shall suffer persecution. It's going to happen for every single one of us. You're going to be reviled. You're going to be, you know, persecuted. You're going to be rejected. Just don't be moved by it. Glorify God. Don't be ashamed of how people treat you ever. Instead, you think about what God thinks about you. <clears throat> that's what counts. That's the most important thing. If He approves you, then everything, that then you'll be passing the test. And back to the last scripture, which would be the first one we started with, and why we brought this message forth, because every one of us are going to stand before him, and we don't want to be ashamed before him at his coming. Again, he says, little children, abide in him. The bottom line is he wants you to abide in him, live in him, remain in him, dwell in him, follow him. This is your life. Those that abide in Him, those are the ones that bring forth much fruit. Those that abide in Him are the ones that continue in the Word. They become the true disciples. They know the truth, and the truth makes them free. Otherwise, they're walking in victory. They're walking in the Word. They're going to overcome. They're going to see the blessings come forth. That when He shall appear, we may be having, remember this says, the ongoing present tense, having confidence. It's not automatic. It's all subjunctive mood. It depends on whether you are abiding in Him. If you're abiding in Him, then you will have that confidence. And you will not be ashamed. Again, remember, subjunctive mood. You won't be ashamed before Him at His coming. Instead, you'll hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's what we want. We want to make sure that we're walking the walk. So we're, you know, we're going over, overcoming, we're working on casting out, we're working on witnessing to people, we're working on dealing with situations in our life. But one thing we've got to be sure is that we've got to always keep ourselves right with the Lord at all times and don't ever get out of fellowship with Him because all this is all really talking about fellowship with God, abiding with Him, trusting in Him, hoping in Him, fear of God before Him, 
upright before him, uh, conquering the soul realm, respect to his commandments, you're going to walk in his ways, speaking and testifying, representing the Lord, you're a witness for him, humble, meditating on his precepts, being sound in the word in your heart, uh, being a virtuous woman, uh, never forsaking him, praying, winning souls, feeding them, raising up. Again, you're, not, you're living a selfless life. You're living it to reach out to people. You're being sanctified. You're in the fear of the Lord. You gain understanding and you're learning doctrine. It all takes a lot of work and time. You're obedient. You get the counsel from God. You stay away from the things of the world. You uh, get knowledge. You get understanding, all these things. Uh, you stay away from anything that's idolatrous. You know He's the Lord. You know God's your help. You are a servant of God. You're serving the Lord. You have hate abominable things. You repent, turn away from all areas of sin. You don't reject the Word of God. It was quite amazing. The guys that reject the Word of God, their wives are going to be taken away from Eve. That was one of the curses because they didn't walk right. Covetous, dealing falsely, all these things. If you don't conquer all sin, if we don't repent. See, these are all going to be important because we're going to, it's not going to be, well, I cast out all these spirits and I got free of some of these problems. Well, that's great, but it's the walk with the Lord that really counts. Humble. Pride's got to be eliminated and put underfoot. Not ashamed of Jesus or His words. You know, fruitful. Getting His counsel. Looking to Him. Led by Him. Following Him. Preaching the gospel. Not ashamed of speaking the truth. Not ashamed. You know, you're going to go through persecution and all these things. You're gonna you're gonna walk the walk. You're gonna you're gonna obey the word and and stay away from people that are the fellowship that aren't walking right. Even though you know the, the enemy tries to get you to compromise now fellowship with people that you shouldn't have fellowship with. No, that's a mistake. Be diligent. Be a workman. Again, it's all you serving the Lord and doing things. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Good doctrine, sound speech, holy, sanctified, all these things, and. Uh, being read, always having good behavior, good conscience, good manner of life, good report with uh, dealing with people. Again, this is all talking about character. The character established because of the working of the Lord in your life and abiding in Him. When we do that, we will not be ashamed at the coming of the Lord. And we're going to hear a good report. We're going to be rewarded. And that's what we want. We want to hear, again, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You're going to be put in your position of authority. You're going to be ruling and reigning in some capacity in the life to come. We all are going to be that way. Something depends on what kind of a walk we've had. Make sure you deal with all this sin. Make sure you get rid of all these attitudes. I mean, you can't be running around in the flesh, and you can't be running around and, and uh, you know, I'm preaching the gospel. I mean, these guys out there preaching the gospel and condemning everybody and they come in contact with, they're not going to have any rewards whatsoever. It's the way they're doing it. It's wrong. You've got to do things with the right spirit in all ways and everything that you do. Say this, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word that reveals those that will be ashamed at the coming of the Lord. I am going to walk in line with your word. I'm going to abide in your word. I'm going to do what the word says. I'm going to put these scriptures into operation and do what's expected of me, walking the walk, eyes upon you, trusting in you, hoping in you, being a doer of the word. I will not reject your word. I will always put your word first place in my life. I will conquer all enemies. I will never forsake or turn away from you. I will look to you for counsel. I will be fruitful. I will never be ashamed of Jesus or of your words. I will be a good steward. I'll be wise with what you've given me. I will preach the gospel. I will have fruits of righteousness unto holiness. So I will not be ashamed. And I will speak the truth even when I have persecution. I will not draw back. I will never be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I will preach it uncompromisingly. I'll never be ashamed of my testimony, of what God's done for me in my life. And I will be a workman 
that's not going to be ashamed because I've done the works of God. And I will be holy. I will be sanctified. I will have a good conscience. I will have good behavior, good manner of life. So I will not be ashamed. I will be seen as a, by the Lord as one who's walked the walk and real, truly followed the Lord. And when, if I have suffering for the gospel, I will glorify God and rejoice in Him. I won't take offense or get attitudes. I will keep my eyes on you and I will rejoice. I thank you, Lord. I'm going to abide in you. So then I will be having confidence and I will not be ashamed at the coming of the Lord. But instead, I will hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I will be exalted and put in the position of service of the Lord in the millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I will never be ashamed. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We walk this walk, then we're going to be approved of the Lord. And that's what it's all about. Praise God. He looks at all the little things. And all these things, a lot of little things, you know, how, how we function, how we say things, how we do things, where our focus is, all this, how we deal with situations, you know, how we, how we speak to people, right speech, all these kind of things. They're all important. So we're going to do it. We're going to walk the walk, and we're going to be blessed of the Lord. Father, I thank you and praise you for your word. We will not be ashamed at the coming of the Lord because we are going to have the character of Jesus Christ because of the word in us and because of your working and because of your healing and your restoration and because of the fruit in our life and because we have accepted your word and we've walked in it. Father, I thank you for the fruit that is going to come forth as we continue in your word and we will never be ashamed just like it was. Those, my people will never be ashamed. All enemies will be smitten and we will see total victory in our life and glorify you in all that we do. Father, I thank you. There'll be much fruit as we hear and do this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're going to walk the walk, then you have confidence. And that's what we want. Good things are going to happen.